So you're looking to do it your first track day. Well, this is something that I've personally just experienced quite recently. So I've put some ideas and some thoughts and tips together to help you get well on your way. Now this guide isn't just for, you know, more experienced riders just to nitpick against. This is designed for new riders looking to do your fir first track day. And I think it's gonna be pretty helpful. So I've split the guide into three different sections. Firstly, being the preparation that you do for your track day. Secondly, during it, you know, what happens during the day and some of the tips that I've found. And then thirdly, the aftermath, you know, what happens after that track day and what's gonna go on into the future. So the first thing that you will do for your first track day is get booked in the correct group. And I just wanna take the guesswork out for you here. If this is your first time at a track day, just book in novice, don't worry about the other groups. Now, there's gonna be ample room for you to go fast, um, but you're just not gonna be mixing it with the more aggressive and faster riders out there in the inters and fast group. And really, kind of no matter how experienced you are or how good or faster road rider you think you are, you know, riding on track is a totally different thing. And, you know, case in point myself, I've been riding for about 15 years and I've got quite a lot of experience on the road. I, I definitely wouldn't class myself as a novice rider, but 100% I'm a novice track day rider and therefore it was fitting to, for, for myself to go in the novice group. Riding at high speed on a track for a sustained period, the things like the flag system, things like track etiquette, and the structure of the day, they're all the things other than your outright speed that make you a novice track day rider. So after you've got booked in, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is sort your motorcycle out. Now, you know, things like checking your tires are in good condition, checking that you've got enough meat on your brake pads, all your fluids are topped up to the right levels. Has it been serviced regularly? You know, doing a track day puts a lot of strain on your motorcycle, so you want it to be in the best condition that it can be. Um, other things like you're gonna wanna either tape up your mirrors or just get rid of them. You know, yeah, I, I think that's really important. It is a recommendation by the track day providers. But the last thing you wanna be doing is like kind of like half focusing on that ZX-10R that's approaching you very quickly from behind when you're also traveling down the track at a high speed. You know, just take that away from yourself. You know, you got enough input going on for your senses without having to worry about what's going behind you. All the tracks in the UK now have quite strict sound testing. Um, now that's not a problem if you've got a standard motorcycle with a standard exhaust on it, but if you've got a great big stupid exhaust like I've got on my motorcycle, you're gonna need to sort that out before you get to the track day. The worst thing you wanna be doing is getting there with a too loud motorcycle and them saying, sorry mate, you can't do it. So I put quite a bit of time into sorting that out and I got one of these uh, baffles, in fact I've got several, and what you do is basically shove that inside this part of the exhaust and it quite Tightens it right down. It means that I don't have to worry about the way that this uh, bike sounds on track. The other thing you want to consider is your plan for motorcycle fuel. Now I put no thought into this on my first track day, but um, you know, basically on track you burn through a huge amount of fuel. You know, whereas normally I'd get like 120, 130 miles out of this tank, on track I'm getting about 80 miles. So it just so happened that there was a place to fill up on track. Um, which was obviously really helpful and we just did that at lunchtime. But you know it's not guaranteed that there is all of the time, particularly with COVID-19 and stuff, they might not be operating. So, you know, have a bit of a plan for that. Um, if you're going in a van, perhaps you could take some fuel with you, or at least you could check out where is the nearest petrol station that, you know, if you need to nip out at lunchtime, you can go and, and, and get your bike filled up, basically. At a track day, there's a lot of focus on tyres. Um, and I've even seen, you know, a lot of novice riders using tire warmers and some of the riders in novice and intermediate even on slicks 
Now, in my personal experience, I just don't get too tied up in this, particularly you know, if you're a novice group, or, and we're talking about this as being your first track day. If you've got a modern sports orientated tire, this is gonna be more than ample for you to do what you need to do. You know, case in point, I use the Dunlop Sportsmart Mark III and Jeff is on the Michelin Power 5. And I have to say, these tires are absolutely unbelievable. They're more than capable of a really high lean angle and they're more than capable of getting your knee down. Basically, this is not the um, limiting factor for me as a rider at this point is my tire choice. I think what a lot of people don't realize about slicks and race rubber is that the operating temperatures that they need to be at and the amount of speed that it takes to get them to that temperature is really quite fast riding and I don't think that a lot of riders in novice and intermediate are going to be able to actually ride quick enough to get them really performing well significantly better than a tyre like this anyway. Um, so you know get a modern road going and sports orientated tyre and you'll be absolutely fine. So after you've sorted your bike out, the next thing to do is sort your gear out as well. So first thing is a helmet. Good helmet, good full face helmet. This is an RI Chaser V, love this helmet. It's also good to have a couple of visor options too, like um, this one is a multi one. I don't use this because that tends to flap up, uh, but I'll take a clear visor and I'll also take a dark visor if the sun comes out too. Make sure it's got the right stickers on it as well. Um, this one has got an ACU sticker on it, which means I can use it in the UK and I think Europe as well. But if you're in a different country, you're in America, perhaps you need a different sticker on it whatever it is make sure it's got the right stickers on because otherwise um, they're going to be pretty picky about your kit and they might not let you ride if you don't have the right one secondly you're going to need a full one piece or two piece leather suit um, so the two piece needs to be a full wrap round zip uh, in order to join it or obviously you've got a one piece too. Make sure that it's in good condition, that the lever's not like cracking, it's not brittle. Um, if you need to give it a clean or a treatment before you do that, uh, before you use it, make sure you go ahead and do that. The last thing you wanna be doing is getting your levers on at your first track day, bending over and the whole thing splits apart. Um, that's not gonna make your day great. Um, so, you know, have a good lever suit, make sure it's in good serviceable condition. Um, I've got a 1990s Max Biaggi Special, which is a bit of a heritage piece and I like using it. Um, also, if you want to do a bit of knee sliding action, make sure you've got a good set of knee sliders uh, left and right. So that is the leather suit. Then you'll also need full length uh, motorcycle racing boots or sports boots. These are mine, they're, they're a former boot. I know them to be uh, good quality. They've also got toe sliders on them as well. Perhaps not so relevant for my particular bike because it's got quite high rear sets. But if you've got a bit more of a sports touring motorcycle like Jeff Z1000SX, for example, his foot pegs are a lot lower and therefore he's more inclined to scratch his toe on the floor. So, you know, it's quite useful for him in particular to have good toe sliders on his boots rather than them catching like a grippy material. It's hitting a magnesium slide and then that's gonna slide and not interrupt his uh, corner. Next thing, you're gonna need full gauntlet gloves. Now they don't let you onto track with a short uh, cuff glove they want to see something that goes over the outside of your leather suit um, obviously these are the Knox Handroids and they're considered to be the best glove in the world um, for racing and for just sports riding it's a full cuff gauntlet glove tightens up with the uh, bow attentioning system and is also importantly got the scaphoid protection system on the palm that's going to enable the glove to slide should you fall off should your hands make contact with that road um, hopefully it doesn't Next point is that, you know, don't forget your back protector, basically. This is often overlooked by riders all over the world, but also on a track day footing as well. Make sure you've got a full length back protector. This is the Knox Aegis one. It's a level two back protector. It's gonna provide you full protection uh, for your whole spine and back area. Uh, really, really important um, piece of protective equipment in the event of a crash. Another addition that I personally use is a pair of uh, padded shorts. These are the Knox Trooper shorts and they basically provide all my hip protection. 
I'm just a bit paranoid about crashing and stuff. So, you know, the, these are a good addition that I put underneath my uh, one piece race suit. So that's the gear and that's pro pretty much standard for the type of gear that you need to use uh, and to wear for your first track day. So another preparation for your first track day is the tools that you're going to take. Now, seemingly most track day riders out there seem to turn up in a big van and they've got tools galore, you know, tire warmers, all that kind of stuff. That is not a requirement. So don't feel like you need all the kit in the world to go and do one. You absolutely don't. But thinking about it, and if I was riding to the track, I would, the minimum I guess I would consider to take with me in terms of tools is a, a few screwdrivers. I think I'd want an Allen key set. I think I'd want an adjustable spanner and some gaffer tape. You know, realistically, that's going to enable me to do some of the basic jobs uh, on a motorcycle. For example, if a bar end weight comes loose or a fairing bolt or something like that, I'm going to be able to tighten stuff up. And also if something gets scratched or knocked off, you know, I can probably gaffer tape it up. And, you know, generally speaking, gaffer tape, uh, gaffer tape is just a lifesaver. Um, so, you know, that's always a useful thing to take to something like a track day. Um, the other thing, obviously, if you do have a van, and we're lucky that we have a van, so we might as well use it, um, is that you can leave some of the jobs that you were going to do prior to your track day, you can leave them until the morning and just do them while you're at the track, like setting your tyre pressure and lubing your chain, taking your mirrors off, all that kind of stuff. You can leave them to the morning, but obviously you need the kit, the, the kit, the kit and the tools to do that. Another thing that I do to get prepared for a track day is do the preparation, you know, um, and check out the track. So you basically I'll go on YouTube, type in track day, you know, at whichever track I'm going to, and I can review other riders' footage of the track, you know, so looking at familiarizing myself basically with the layout of the track, where people are typically braking, the kind of corner speed that they're carrying, all of that kind of stuff just helps you get a step ahead really um, about where you're going to ride and I think you know that's an important step and I'd actually attribute some of the successes that I had at the Bike Shed Festival last year to some of that uh, prior research you know I, I was familiar with the track before I'd even rode it and that enabled me to just crack on and, and you know get a half decent result. So since COVID, a lot of the track day organizers are delivering their safety briefings uh, digitally. So you'll have to sign on and either listen to an audio track or uh, a, a video track, listen out what the safety briefing is. Really try and engage in this one. I mean, you have to watch it, um, otherwise they won't let you go and do the track day, but really try and engage and focus on what they're trying to say. You know, particularly as a newer track day rider, all this information is absolutely critical. You know, whether that's the flags, whether that's the order of the day, you know, track day etiquette, all that kind of stuff, very, very important. So make sure you watch it and make sure you listen to it. And finally, the documents that you need. Make sure you've got them, basically. And that's not gonna be the same in every country, but in the UK, it seems that we need to take our driving license. And if you haven't turned up with your driving license, you ain't riding. So make sure you've got the right documents that you need. So now we're on to the next section where we're talking about the time during your first ever track day. So overall, we're wanting you to really enjoy your day and be able to come back for more, basically. And, you know, the first point is, Everything I know about motorcycle riding says that smooth riding, smooth handling, smooth braking, not being jerky with the controls, not being jerky with the throttle and brakes and cornering, they're all good things and they're gonna enable you to progressively build up your speed within your comfort zone. So use that mentality on your first day. You know, we're not setting track uh, records here uh, in terms of lap times and stuff. We're about focusing on learning the track, learning the way that the bike handles on track and progressively and smoothly building up your speed all within your comfort zone. They're all really good things to be focusing on for your first ever track day. And there's definitely going to be times where you can you know, look to make more progress, but you're not gonna be able to deliver everything that you want to in your first day. So for example, if you can't get your knee down in the first day, 100% don't force it, it will come in time. You've just gotta give time to these things. So the first tip and a little hack for you, and it will be the first thing that you do on your first track day, is to have a sighting lap. Now, if you can, try and get there early. Now, I mean, entering the queue like a couple of minutes, 
before anybody else does and it might feel a little bit awkward or you might feel a little bit cheeky for doing this but try and get to the front of the queue for your sighting lap basically the sighting lap is where an instructor is going to take you around the track and you know it's an opportunity to familiarize yourself with that track but because you follow the instructor they're going to show you the racing line and the correct lines to take um, when you're on it. I did that on the first track day I did and the second track day I did I made sure that Ollie got to the front of the queue and it, to be fair it was an invaluable time and actually for us it was the only time during both days that we were actually following closely an instructor so it's a really good uh, first tip that is. So the second tip is keep an eye on the time. Now I've personally found that track days are a bit of a timing game and the providers seem to run them like absolute clockwork. So keep an eye with where you are in your hour time slot, you know, when you're finishing and then the amount of time that you need to prepare for the next one. Make sure you've got a good eye on that time slot to make sure that you're not late for anything because no one's going to wait for you. Now the third tip is be a bit of a steady eddy. Now a track day session of 20 minutes doesn't sound like very long, but multiply that by seven times and at decent speed, and we're covering about 150 miles. Now that is 150 miles of action-packed, concentrated adrenaline rush, basically. You know, 150 miles, I mean, that's like twice the average MotoGP round. It's a real attack on your senses, particularly if this is, um, you know, your first time on track. Now, in my first track day, it just so happened that all of the red flags, all of the crashes happened in the last two to three sessions. Now, you know, while I didn't know the fine details of each of those crashes, it's not hard to put two and two together here and assume that, you know, a reducing amount of concentration and fatigue may have contributed to what happened. And with that in mind, make sure that you're eating plenty and you're drinking plenty as well. You know, you've got good food that you're snacking on regularly, not like chips and burgers and all that kind of stuff. Good slow release food and snacking regularly. You don't want to be bloated when you're going back out onto track. Make sure you're drinking loads as well. It's amazing the amount of water and sweat that you're producing while you're on track. And, you know, if you're tired as well, perhaps you drove there in the morning, consider a nap, you know, midday, you know, um, having a little kip somewhere you know it's all going to contribute to you feeling good when you get back out on track also as well don't be afraid to back it off at any one point perhaps you've gone in your third or fourth session a little bit confident now a little bit cocky perhaps and you know you're starting to make a couple of mistakes here and there at that point you know just don't be afraid to back it off you can always regain that speed afterwards but we want you safe and we want you coming back for more so don't be afraid to back it off so the way that I approach a track day is to say that it's not a race. This is a track day. So, you know, we're not racing. You know, if you want to go racing, go racing. This is a track day. So that means that I want to become a better rider and riding faster, consistently and safely, and also being respectful of others out there, out there who are looking to do the same thing too. So, you know, leave all the racing maneuvers you know for the for, for racing they're not uh, welcome actually on a track day and not only do we cheese other riders off but we might also get a, a black flag for doing that and be dismissed from the day um, you know we're looking to improve our own riding we're looking to get consistently uh, faster and safer and not kill the guy in front either and if you do need to overtake anybody especially in the novice groups everybody is passable so you just need to plan how you're going to do this. So the, the two sections that I would do it is I would back it off in the corners and, you know, leave myself enough room to get an early drive out of there. And therefore, if I can get on the throttle earlier than they are, I will pass them on the straight and or um, on the brakes. You know, basically most people that I've found are pretty early on the brakes, certainly in these novice groups. So you're always able to overtake people by just being a little bit later on the brakes. But don't bother mid-corner or during corner or stuffing them up the inside. But they're your two op opportunities to overtake, either being early on the gas or late on the brakes. So now we're into the next section after your track day. And this was one of the coolest things because you know, basically we just spent the whole journey home talking about what a fantastic time we'd had, you know, how good the bikes were, how good the track was, how good the tyres were, and of course what we'd like to do next time too. It was a really, really enjoyable experience just talking about how good it was.
Of course, after your track day, there's a little bit of housekeeping to do. You've got to unstrap your bike. You've got to you know, check all your gear is okay. Any gear that got sweaty, do we want to wash that? How do we want to treat it? And you know, get it in a position where it can be used on the next track day. Obviously, that also applies to your bike. You want to be putting your mirrors back on, checking your tires are in good condition. You know, is the bike in any worse state than it was when we went to actually do our track day? So you want to be checking all your levels and you know, consider servicing it again, basically. Um, so that is a, a really important point. Now the second thing that you can do after your first ever track day is review any video content and or imagery done by the official photographer at that track day. Now while I wouldn't necessarily recommend strapping your GoPro to your bike on your first ever track day because of the added pressure that that might put on you, um, it remains the fact that reviewing what you look like on track does help you go forward and make a game plan for the next one. So case in point, my first ever track day, I was a little bit cheesed off that I didn't get my knee down. I didn't get my knee down all day. Um, you know, and at the time I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm, I've got good at lean angle. I felt like I was leaning into the corners right and I just couldn't work out what was happening. Well, having purchased a couple of pictures from the official photographer, I could quickly see then that my perception wasn't in line with reality. Um, and as you can see on the picture, I'm totally uh, sat bolt upright. But what that enabled me to do is actually approach the second track day with a bit of a game plan. So in my head, I was thinking, look, I'm gonna break less into the corners and therefore I'm gonna um, enter the corner with a little bit more corner speed and I'm gonna apply a bit more uh, body positioning to my corner. And you know what? it absolutely worked you know after the first session of my second track day i was knee on the deck and you know the the whole day you know uh, left and right knee down no problems and i followed that game plan and it worked but without that reviewing the imagery i wouldn't have been able to do that and again we repeat the cycle so on the second track day you know i felt to myself oh god i'm hanging off like mark marquez and then I you know, look at the pictures that we purchased and I think, crikey, I'm still stiffer than the Pope at a nightclub. You know, it's like there's opportunities to improve basically. And the GoPro footage also helps as well. So reviewing that, you know, you can perhaps see areas where you could improve. Perhaps it's carrying more corner speed. Perhaps it's your gear selection in certain corners, you know, and, and very quickly we can see big chunks of time that we can shave off or big areas improvement that we can make for our next track day. And then of course you can take it one step further. Perhaps you could find somebody on YouTube, for example, who is a rider who's quicker than you and then you could overlay that on top of your footage and then you can basically use them to help you find areas where you're slow on track or parts of your lap where there's big areas of improvement. And then that just helps you make the next game plan you know because there might be actually areas during your lap that actually you're quite good but then there's areas where you're really weak and then that's going to help you approach the next day with a better plan and then the last thing that you need to do is get right back onto the track day provider website and book your next one so overall i really hope that's been helpful for you guys planning your first track day uh, with some helpful tips in preparation during and afterwards. So as you can tell, I'm totally getting this track day bug and I'm going to be looking to improve my personal skills over the coming year period. So, you know, stay tuned and see what happens there. So look, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, please comment, please subscribe to the channel too, and we'll see you next time.